Uh, my next question comes from Michael, and he says, overcoming gossip, slander, meddling, etc. what is the key? How do you overcome gossip? Um, you have to love people. That's it. You gossip about somebody, you don't love them. That's the problem. And, and so uh, when, when, I, when I find myself in a, in a position where I want to talk about somebody, usually it's because I'm jealous or because I'm mad or because I, I want to feel superior. Or, you know, you can go, go down the list of things that, that cause people to gossip. And what it all comes down to is you don't love that person. And, uh, you know, so that's, that's what I would be focusing on. If, you know, when I, actually that's what I do focus on. When I, when I have a, uh, a temptation to, to go around and, and talk to people about other people behind their back, um, I ask the Lord to help. You know, I, I, my, my attitude at that point is, God, I obviously do not love this guy. Or I don't, I don't love this person. And so, God, you've got to help me because this is not what you called me to. And so, so in the culture that we live in where it's, everything is just so slanderous and gossip-driven, talking mm -hmm. about from our politics, from our leaders, all the way down to the magazines on the shelves, to TV, I mean, literally everything, Facebook, like, it's in everything. Right. The news media? But yeah, everything. Most of it's nothing but gossip. It's so crazy. So yeah. living in that culture where it can be, like, obviously, like, someone who's a Christian who's trying to live for the Lord and not talk about, he, about somebody, that, uh, that precedence that set of just a uh, pattern, trying to break the pattern. Where, is there a tip for, you know, I don't want to gossip, but it's, it's so ingrained that it just like comes out. Like, how do you, how well, do you transition the pattern? Well, when, when the, the way that I always do, I just keep this stuff simple. Jesus said, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And so do I want people trashing me behind my back? Right. And so if I don't want that happening, then it would be a good idea if I didn't do that. And so, uh, you know, I just keep simple things in, in, in my mind and in, in the front of me. I don't make this complex. This is not complex. And uh, when, when I've talked to, uh, to people about the whole gossip situation, usually I'm doing it in the context of their gossiping to me. And you, they start in on, on a person and I go, Okay, first off, we got a problem here because you have you talked to them, and they go no, and all, always they go no, and then I go you need to go talk to them before you talk to me, and I you know we do Matthew 18 there, and then I start talking to them about the love issue. You don't love this person. Well, yes I do. No, you don't. You just wanted to tear them down in front of me, and so you don't love them. And on top of it, and then I do the golden rule, and I just keep it really simple. And so that's how, that's how I got past a lot of the junk that, that um, I have had a problem with. I memorized scripture. Um, your word I've hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. And so there are passages of scripture that I have memorized. And the reason I have it memorized is because I had problems in those areas. And so the, the Bible talks about the fact that um, the things that, are, that come, out of our, come out of our mouths need to be wholesome. Here's a, here's a good passage for you. This is out of the book of Ephesians in chapter 4. Let me get there. And it, um, it says, uh, Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And so the when I'm looking at what comes out of my mouth, it's supposed to be something that builds people up, not tears people down. And it's supposed to impart grace. Um, the word grace is unmerited favor. It, it's the idea of giving good things to people that they don't deserve. And so the things that are supposed to be coming out of my mouth are supposed to be things that impart good things to people that they don't deserve. And it's, it's the same situation when you're talking about somebody that you're mad. You know? Yeah, I really like that because it's not just I'm trying not to gossip, but you're not even entertaining the idea by allowing someone to gossip in front of you, right? right. It's from both sides, right. which totally removes it from your life, which breaks the routine. Yeah, I had, a, I had a boss one time who just had a real problem with gossip, and we had a, had a guy on the crew, and um, he didn't show up one day because uh, he had some other things going on. And, you know, the boss and I were friends, and um, he was still my boss, but um, we were friends. And he starts talking about this guy, and I go, hey, dude, I don't want to hear this. I don't want you to talk about, you know, about him uh, behind his back. And he kept on, 
and he just would not stop. And, and you know, finally, I thought I was going to lose my job. But I said to him, you know what? Um, when you do this, when you sit here and trash somebody behind, behind their back to me, what I wonder is what you do when I'm not here. And he got real quiet and didn't say anything. And I go, I don't want to hear it. You need to go, you got a problem with the guy, you go talk to him. You're his boss. Go talk to him. And, you know, he, he shut up, walked away. And I didn't lose my job. Get your job. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and that kind of thing. But, you know, it's like we're, we're supposed to hate that stuff. Spend time in Proverbs, man. You know, you go through and that's another thing that I, that I do when I'm uh, having a struggle in an area is I just look up what the Bible has to say about those things and see what God's heart is towards that. God does not like trashing people behind their backs. He does not like it. Yeah, you know, that's one of those sins, like when I, before I became a Christian, when I got saved, like I thought there were sins that were bigger than others, right? Mm -hmm. Homosexuality or murder or whatever, killing. When you find out in the Bible, like one of the things that got us into this slander, mm -hmm. that Satan was a slanderer. Right. That when you, you know, I've been doing 10, 15 years as a believer, you watch the little riffles that come up that explode a church body, the attacks on a church. Mm -hmm. It's gossip. Right. It's slander. Actually, you know, you, you said Satan is a slanderer. The word for devil in Greek is slanderer. Yeah. You, when, you, when you were calling somebody as you're a slanderer, the term you used was diabolos. It's, you know, diab, diabolos. It's where we get our word diabolic. It means devilish. And so, you know, you, when, when you see the, the term for slander in the New Testament, and you read it, don't be a slanderer, don't be a diabolos, mm -hmm. is what it says. Don't be a devil, is what it says. That, that makes an impact, man. It's just like, I don't want to be a devil. Yeah. So just walk up to a mic and say, don't be a devil. <laughs> no, don't do that. All right, man, hopefully that answers your question. Thanks for posting.